My name is Russ Cook and I'm attempting to become the first person ever to run the entire length of Africa. This is where I started, this is where I'm going and this is where I am now. I've run 4,303 kilometres so far and I've got 10,697 left to go. In this episode, we cross the Congo River's only bridge as we venture deeper into the DRC, explore their funeral traditions and spend a night with a village chief. Hello, we're here at the border. Russ is munching on some rusk, so he won't be doing much talking on this segment. Boys, what do we think's going through his head right now, seeing as he's unable to speak? Mm. Oh, we need a boo. What the f have I gotten myself into? Will my girlfriend still love me when I get home? Uh. <laughs> You've got 8k left on this side of the Congo River. And mm -hmm. um, you're going to head back into the border now to start your run. Yep. Okay, good luck. Please don't die. I scrambled back to the border. Bang, bang. And then ran back into the chaos of Matadi. It was tough running through endless crowds, twisting paths and destroyed roads. But it was only an eight kilometre stretch through the city to the Matadi Bridge over the Congo River. I met back up with the boys to pay the toll and then we were on our way. So we are currently crossing the Congo River. This is the only official bridge across the entire river. And it's the second biggest in all of Africa. Which is pretty cool, I think. It is quite a big river. The Congo River is the second longest in Africa and ninth in the world, stretching 4,700 kilometers from the Zambian border in the east to the west coast of the DRC. At its widest point, it's 24 kilometers across and it's also the world's deepest river, reaching over 200 meters deeper than the English Channel. But despite its insane size, this is the only official bridge across it, and that's why we chose the route we took, avoiding the impurity of a ferry crossing through Kinshasa. Wow, that is stunning. That is stunning, though. Watch this, then. Oh, oh Lord. Oh, my God. <laughs> Absolute carnage. They're all just chilling out on the bridge. They're vibing, like they're, they're legitimately in... vibing they're... on the side of the bridge. I think they're just proud of their bridge and it's a beautiful bridge. They should be proud of it. It is. It's so common as a hangout spot, clearly, that there are people motoring around just through the crowds with food on their heads, like selling Cokes and stuff. As soon as I was over the river, the hustle and bustle gave way to quiet but hilly tarmac that snaked into the mountains until we turned the corner and saw this. Uh, I don't know what's going on. There is chaos in the roads. People are Wait, walking. As far as we can see. Like, just this. Stopped, stopped. What is happening? Might like a funeral, man. I don't know. This is a funeral. These guys make gravestones. Maison de Rêve. It's interesting. I don't really know what's going on. Like, they're, they're burning fires in Everywhere. the graveyard. Like, all over. Um, we should do some research. I genuinely wonder if it's like some sort of celebration of the dead today. It's clearly not a single funeral. This is and a like big event. side of the road here, people are just selling bamboo or sugarcane. Sugar cane, yeah. It's really amazing. To be honest. The van took an hour to get a kilometre up this road, and I followed close behind. It was an amazing sight, but also a vulnerable place to be, and it left me feeling on edge and tired from the extreme elevation. <laughs> doing yeah talk to us a bit about that then lad well, burning um, the grave like burning around the graves right. it was interesting bro like that whole area i reckon it was some sort of festival of the dead because everyone was out and yeah, all those fucking hills before that crud dude yeah a lot of hills. that was wild i'm sorry yeah. lots of hills Bruh. mental glad it's not 100k day today yeah i'm always be going to about 2 a.m how are you feeling Man, I'm actually feeling mad lethargic right now. Yeah? I've definitely just been on like high alert all day. A bit, little bit more hostile. Mm. Today we've had a couple of decent encounters. I, we had like, one good encounter yesterday as well. We spoke to these Donnies back here and they were like, are you alright? Are you broken down? They were, they were nice, weren't they, Jared? But it's tricky to judge it based on this area because this area is super f***ing, like it's close to the border and that. Okay, another 20. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Ready, yeah? The next 20k were a lot easier as the elevation relaxed and so did the people. I was stopped by a group of plainclothes police who wanted my passport so the boys had to bail me out 
but it gave us no trouble and let me continue soon after. Meanwhile, the boys were on the hunt for a place to sleep. So we've just rocked up to a mission that we found on the side of the road. We're going to go and talk to them, see if there's any sort of way we can... Yeah. They couldn't stay at the mission, but they coincidentally bumped into the chief of the village next door and he very kindly welcomed us into his beautiful home. It was a small place with just a few houses, but the families that lived there welcomed the boys with open arms. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I'm good, mate. Good. Yeah. Hello. Je s'appelle Rus. Rus, There's a little mission for, for leprosy. It's literally just over the road. Yeah, yeah. And we saw it and we saw a mission and thought it was a religious mission. We're like, okay. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, ah, oh, we can't because it's, uh, it's an international thing. They're like, we need permission, etc. We can't shoot here either. He was like, yeah, but you're in luck. I'm the chief of the village. And it's like literally this village, like 100 meters further on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 40k. How many, how many have you done? 42.2. Yeah, bang on. Okay. So you're going to call it a night or you want to bang on? Mate, if I'm doing 103 tonight and starting from where we finish, we'll f out. Good ball. It doesn't hurt because we can f up at 5 a.m. As soon as the sun rises, pretty much. Ah, oh, yeah. Fuck it. Yeah. Get an early night, sleep yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. It's dark by six as well, isn't it, really? Half uh, six. Six oh nine. The start at six, and you're going to be start at five. If I start at five, then you've always come and meet me at seven. Yeah. Late morning, or sorry, early morning is way better than late night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, let's get you yeah. missioned up. That, yeah, it's going to be a painful day, but I'll get it done. 103k. But if you put it off one more day, it's 104k. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm paying interest on every day. <laughs> What's 1k between friends? I'm sure after 103, that 104th, that final kilometer feels it was like a suck, bit. Dude. Well, we're safe here tonight. Yeah, yeah. They're really friendly. They're really, really nice. But yeah, they know your story. They know why you're here. People have been awesome. So this so seems like a bubbly. The house. Girl. She's so sweet, dude. Really, yeah. So sweet. Too. But that over there, that's the chief's house. And uh, the older lady seems to be his mother, and the younger lady is his wife. This baby girl is his daughter. Uh, it's a nice place, man. Feels very safe. Yeah. Cool. Mate, I'll tell you what, as well. That uh, that second twenty, the people were way friendlier. Yeah. 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 This like, is what we were saying yesterday. Is like the border town. Oh, I said bonjour. People said it back. Mm. That's right. Yeah. Doesn't hurt. Doesn't yeah. Mate, apart from them, eight of them pulled up on a couple of motorbikes. Yeah. Tried to stop me. I was like. Pfft. Yeah. Then it got to that section where I had to turn left. It couldn't fuck. I was like, fuck, it left and right. And then all of them came back, surrounded me. I was like, none of them were in uniform. I was like, no. Were they fed? Well, they were, well, they were fed. When I was wearing a suit, he had a walking stick. Like, yeah. he, was, uh, he wasn't there on crud. Nah, it was yeah. just like eight of them surrounded me immediately. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. yeah. Like, they basically yeah, yeah. said there's loads of terrorists yeah. around here. We want to make sure yeah. he's not one. And we also got the number out of that of an immigration officer, was yeah. it? Just say, call me if there's any trouble. Wait, spoke English as well? Yeah, yeah perfect English, bro. All of like, them. Really? Yeah, beautiful English, genuinely. On that note, Harry, if they didn't speak English and someone else was here, how would they learn to speak French? Ah, they would go to the link in the description and study with Lingo Culture. Right here. Haha. <laughs> I spent six months with them and now I speak French. It helps us get um, where we're going. So you're going to see a lot more content and conversations in French over the next six months. Because basically all of the other countries we're visiting are French speaking. Uh, dick all French. Actually, dick. Well, good news for you. We have a link you can use. <laughs> As the sun set, we settled into this beautiful place. The chief's daughter and her friends were fascinated by Stan's editing and spent the night drawing on his tablet and watching him work. But there was something lurking in the jungle. It's all super dark out. And then I can look around the corner and I see this caveman taking his bath in the bush there. <laughs> this is cinema. Hello everyone. You join me for this segment of bath time whilst running the entire length of Africa. I ain't really, none of the content has really been me having a shower, but I do pretty much every day. 
This is why I love hot showers so much, because this sucks. <laughs> but it's better than going to bed all sweaty. The only trouble is tonight we're in this little village. There's loads of little kids around. Ugh. <laughs> Just hit the vitals, do you know what I mean? Get those armpits. Just sort of go with the ocean over the chest. Right, one bad thing that did happen is I lost my towel a while ago. So I'm now just kind of using stray jumpers for me towel. I crawled into my bed, apprehensive of my 100k day, but glad to be in a safe place. But the kindness of these people had lulled us into a false sense of security and nothing could have prepared us for what would come next. In the next episode, a series of critical errors land me lost in the jungle and an attempt to get me back to safety, my life, the project and the team are thrown into the balance.